right where I. Okay, this is the Yarn Closet uh, podcast for May 1st. Uh, we are recording on April 30th, and we're both pretty much blind, so we can't really see because we're on a cell phone today. Um, I am Yarn Closet AZ on Instagram and Ravelry. Uh, TheYarnCloset.com. This is the first time I've worn a white shirt in 20 years. Doesn't Ow! She, doesn't she look nice? And this is my mom, Kitty. I'm not on Arizona. She's not on Instagram. And She's on uh, Facebook. Um, so we're going to do the May 1st podcast. <sighs> what else? Oh, the yarn closet on Patreon. I have four Patreons, and the more Patreons I get, the more um, prizes that we'll send out. We send out at least one a month. I will show the May prize and give you um, an idea of what that is. We've doubled our subscribers. We're up to like 160 now. It's just mm -hmm. fabulous. We are so grateful. Um, Started this out for the knitting community because um, I don't get out much. I'm legally blind, don't drive. Um, I can get to my mom's house. That's where we are today. We and, live five blocks apart. Yeah, and I can get to the school, uh, my daughter's school, <coughs> and CVS. It's fabulous. And other than that, the kids are both in the other room with Grandpa because my daughter keeps having... Um, allergies at school she's allergic to strawberries and these other kids keep thinking it's springtime to eat strawberries which it is whatever yeah so anyway here we go that's about as good as it's gonna get it's gonna be a fabulous <clears throat> podcast this week because there's gonna be lots of shenanigans and some yarn um, my mom is new to knitting. She learned as a kid and just started up again because she has macular and she used to be... Both wet and dry. She used to be a quilter. These are her quilts behind me, but she doesn't do that anymore. And knitting, she can do by feel. So she started that up again. Mm -hmm. And we're originally from Minnesota. Now we live in Tucson, Arizona, where it's too hot. And there's too many imported flora and fauna. Allergy season is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the drier it is in the winter time, the less water we get, the uh, rain in the winter time, makes us have uh, worse spring allergies. And right now, the oleander bushes, I, I, did they have that in Minnesota? Mm -mm. No. They have beautiful oleander bushes here. And those oleander bushes kill us with allergies and, and they are deadly actually like if they end it, up in your pool and then your pets drink the water and you've yeah. got a high enough concentration yeah they can kill the pets and um right now the palo verde trees are absolutely beautiful say they're in the oh. family of goldenrod and so all we do we all take our allergy pills <coughs> and we sneeze and and we keep the kleenex people in Cruise money, because trust me, they must all get cruises from bonuses as to how much. Okay, do you want to see what No, I, I want to say thank you to everybody who has sent messages um, to me. I had surgery a week ago today um, to have my breast implants removed, my 20-year-old breast implants. There's this thing people talk about now called breast implant illness. Disease. And yeah. and there is real disease. And there is a cancer that is caused from certain breast implants. Um, all breast implants, silicone or saline, are are in a silicone pouch. And over time, it degrades and sloughs off into your body. So mine went in clear saline with the silicone pouch. Twenty years later, they came out yellow so there had been transfer of fluid somehow um, 
I was very skeptical about this breast implant illness business um, because I'd been told all my life and as things progressively got worse because they have a life expectancy of about eight to 10 years. And at about that 10 year mark, I had my first child at 36 and I was just told that I was a weak woman. You know, I was having brain fog due to having a baby at an older age, that women just can't cope with having children at an older age, that it uh, jump-started me into perimenopause, and that all of this was just age-related and woman-related, and I was just not coping because I was a weak woman. Um, fast forward, 43, had a baby, Things progressively got worse. Well, you know, the anxiety is because you finally went legally blind in your um, 30s and you're just not coping with it, being a mom and blah, 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 blah. Be, you're a weak woman. You're, you're menopausal. You're this, you're that. It makes no sense. But I woke up feeling better. I woke up in excruciating pain and feeling crummy from anesthesia, but I was more clear-headed than I had been in years. I am really tired right now. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, been up for about three hours, been up a couple times in the middle of the night with kids and dogs, and I'm tired. I need a nap. Doesn't but she just look awful today? But Doesn't it's a real she look tired. Awful. It's a real tired. It's a tired that a nap you know, a 20 minute nap will actually yes. improve. Whereas the tired that I had before mm -hmm. was like carrying around Santa's big bag of presents. It's like, that's what I felt like the exhaustion I carried with me. Things that I never thought were related have just disappeared, disappeared. I had a hip pain that was so bad that it woke me up at night. Um, because I was an old lady at, you know, 47. It's gone. I have zero aches and pains. Zero. I mean, pain from the surgery. And let me tell you, it hurts. And I still have... Well, don't um, show those again. Because drains. It'll, it'll throw up if you watch, and he'll watch it. I still have the drains, and you can kind of feel those in there, and it's just awful. And I mean, you know, there's nothing there. But your boobs are as big as my boobs. Yeah. That except would be that, why I got them in the first place. Except that mine are old, and sometimes I just tuck them into my pockets. Yeah. Um, I, should be a I can't even believe the amount of things that have improved in one week. It's shocking to me. The clear-headedness is such a relief. And this is weird. Honestly, people, I was sad all the time. I was just so desperately sad. And I'm on two antidepressants that I went on after the hysterectomy because they help with that menopause stuff. I'm on two lower than the minimum dosage, but they apparently work together. And I was still sad all the time. It's gone. I'm a retired nurse. And I look at her today and I think of the patient of a week ago, the patient, if I look nurse-wise at you, of before, and I can't, I can't believe the difference. Look at her skin. Her, I mean, her skin is clear. Um, you, your affect. My gums are tight on my teeth again. <laughs> the acne that I was having, which I mean, wasn't bad by some people's standard, but I still had it. I had rashes daily. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't shave my legs because I'd get a rash and I'd get like a, a scab from shaving my legs. I've shaved my legs three times. Ch it was a challenge because, you know, moving. Um, but overall, this has worked for you. And so just like I was talking to somebody last night who had a very severe reaction to a medication and almost died last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you who that was later. And we're talking about how all things don't affect all people the same way. 
just like all women do not have hot flashes all women do not lose their mind going through menopause you know we have as women we have really gotten a bad rap about everything the fact that it's almost 2020 and doctors attitudes is we're still stupid weak women we're not I mean, give me a break we've survived as women forever and we carry the load of a lot of stuff in our households and we a lot of us were working women a lot of us went to school and had kids and we're working at the same time whatever we are not weak because we go in and say but i what am i going to do about these migraines and they just look at you like oh geez here we go another whiner no it's not whiner whiner 49er it is, we are saying, help us. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's really wrong with us. Don't just blame everything on, on menopause. That's, they started blaming menopause symptoms on me when I was 29 years old. That was the first time they did the blood test panel thing for menopause and started saying, you know, your early menopause. At 29, I hadn't had any children. Give me a break. So anyway, I'm a, yeah, I'm a little annoyed by that. But overall, far more cheerful these days, too. Um, and it's been a tough week. My mother-in-law died unexpectedly the same day I was having surgery. Um, How many times? Although my mom and stepdad had my daughter for a week, it has still been a challenge um, to be cooking food for a family the day after to be, you know, doing all the things and, and when all I really wanted to do was, you know, rest. The nice thing, bad thing is that your mother-in-law died that same day, but bad, nice thing is that your husband had to leave the next morning so that you didn't have to make man food as we yeah. call it. Yeah. You know, you could just cook for yeah. you and, and Connor, your son. Mm -hmm. um, and the kids offered... were actually quite a bit helpful. I mean, my four-year-old now knows how to help mommy put her underwear on and take mommy's shirt off and stuff. And she's really helpful. she's she's has no problem with the drains. My son, on the other hand, he's not going into medicine. That's for sure. If that child has an eyelash that comes out, he's got to have open heart surgery. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's... Connor is lovely. We love him. We know a lot of you love him. Um, but he's a man in training. Yeah. You know, they get a cold. You know, they need to go to bed. They need to take a nap. We get a cold. We think... Uh, I had a friend once. This is a true story. I had a friend once who had three children. And then, 38 years old, all of a sudden, she had another baby. And so she had no time to for colds. And one day I went over Did and Barb? I, no. Kay. Kay was forty two. Oh, was she that old? Yeah, Leslie mm -hmm. was in second grade. Kay was forty two. Oh. And um anyway, I go over one day and I said, Kay, what are you doing? She's walking around, she had two Kleenexes stuffed up her nose, hanging out. Looked like she had two like tampons in her nose, and she said, "I don't have time. I gotta, I gotta make breakfast. I gotta clean up. I gotta get kids ready for school. I got a baby crying. I got this. I got that." She says, "I don't have time for my nose to be running and stopping and dripping." Oh my and, God! Do you want to know what we found out yesterday? And the kids yesterday? were just dying of embarrassment. And I said, "Hey, whatever works, your mom." So what? last night after the after the eyes swelling shut from the strawberry allergy and all the Benadryl well, you in the world. Told him that part. Oh, I thought I did. Anyway, um, the four year old. Oh my God! Your brain fog is coming back, honey. You're in. This is a roller coaster. It's not just one and done, people. This is detox. It's up and down. It's not a straight path. Anyway, she um, her nose started draining. Oh my God! You thought she was gonna die. She started freaking out. It just keeps draining. It. And I mean, literally a box and a half of Kleenex. She's rubbing so bad, it's making everything worse. Yeah. I'm trying to get her to lay down and put an ice pack on. My husband is mad at me and then goes and lays on top of her. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Do you know he's not said, oh, I'm so sorry you had surgery. 
not Jack Diddley. He couldn't give two shits about me. Thank you very much. He he does, but he's got a lot going on on his plate. Yeah. But she didn't tell Whatever. you this. Whatever. Why do we she cut them you... all the slack in the world for all the shit on their plates, but we never man, get cut slack? Because they're men. Okay. She didn't tell you this part. So last week, okay, Ed was with you. I don't know what he was doing. Anyway, Ed was, my husband, was with her. I had Connor here, and um, Prue was at school, and Ed gets a call. Oh, it was the day that she was having surgery. Ed gets a call. Um, she's having an allergic reaction, and, and we can't find the Benadryl, so can somebody please bring the Benadryl? And he says, ah, well, he calls me, and he says, and I told her, well, uh, I can't because I'm at the surgery place, and so I'll call Kitty. So he calls me and says, you either have to go up and get her and take her home, or you have to go up and get, uh, bring her some Benadryl, give her some Benadryl. I said, okay. I'm thinking, wait a minute. I don't have a car. I don't. I couldn't drive it. Well, you I don't did. drive anyway. Yeah. So what I'm doing. So luckily, so school and CVS is five blocks from my mom's house. So I say, all right, Connor, you're 11 years old. You're just fine. The cat is here. She'll protect you. And um, you know, legally, we're not supposed to leave him home alone. We better start over. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So you didn't do it. I did. And I said, I'm right down the street. And I said, you're going to be here just for a few minutes. I call my friend Shay, who luckily only lives a mile away. And oh, that's I, right. Shay came over. And I said, Shay, what are you doing? And she says, well, I'm in my car and I'm just leaving to go do errands. And I said, well, here's your first errand. I said, is it anything you have an important, like, a, you know, Time. doctor um, no, no, no. She said, I'm just doing errands. I said, well, then run right over to our house. You can be there in one minute. I said, get over to our house. I'll call Connor. I'll tell him that you're coming. He'll be ecstatic because he loves Shay. And they played games. And he beat her. And so I said, you got to go over and stay with um, Connor because I'm on my way to school to bring some Benadryl over. So I get to the school after walking. I don't walk, let me tell you. And so I saw that. And so I get to the school and I'm, you know, and they said, oh, we already gave her the Benadryl because we found it. Now it was in the bottom of the box and it had her name on it. And I'm thinking, oh, lady. <coughs> and so then, I, oh. so then I look at Prue and honestly, God, I said, Prue, come here. I said, here, I, Grandma's got a phone. I can't, I can't do camera out anymore. It's broken, but I can do selfies. I said, stand right here. So I take some, some uh, pictures of her so that Laura can see it later on. This child's cheeks puffed out. Her eyes puffed out. Underneath her eyes, she just went like this. And I said, did you give her any eye drops to wash her face or anything? No, they hadn't done that. So... I take her and I wash her face and wash her hands, you know, blah, 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 and get uh, the eye drops in her. Okay, so then Shay brings Connor, comes to the school. This is typical women's day. Comes to the school, picks me up, runs me back so that I can actually put on a clean shirt because I was cleaning and I had a stained shirt on. And so, and she's making me a quick sandwich and runs me back. And I said, okay, I will eat lunch with her in the lunchroom because it was lunchtime. And I said, so I'll be right here. And I'm going to see, because she'd been out on the playground when she had this allergic reaction, but none of the other kids did. So I said, I'm going to be here. Then I will see on the playground how bad this comes. But I know... We didn't even make it that far mm -hmm. because we're sitting there and all of a sudden she's talking and she looks at me for something and I thought, holy crap, she's already got Benadryl in her. She had a couple of Benadryl. She had the allergy eye drops and she's starting all over again. Because I found out from one of the parents that their child had strawberries during snack time and lunch time. Yeah. And so, all right, so I go over and I said to the lunch lady, do not let her out of this room. 
I'm going to go get her stuff and I'm going to sign her out and we're going home. I called Shay and I said, um, Shay, and she said, um, Ed is here right now. He just got Laura home. So Ed will, uh, I'm leaving. Ed will come and get you. Bring you back home. Okay, so that's two in one day. Then it was, was it Friday? One other day anyway. Then there was one other day and then there was she yesterday. And, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is, initially, it wasn't so bad. And my dad's also allergic to strawberries. And his allergy isn't that bad. Like, I can have strawberries sitting at a restaurant. As long as he's not eating them, he's fine. I question at this point with Prue where we'd be at with that. But also, there's so much else in allergy season right now that's affecting her. I think it's that it's that full bucket scenario yeah. that they like to talk about now. I, because you take her out of the house and walk her to the car to go to school or anything and she starts mm -hmm. sneezing. So I think she's got yeah. probably the pale verde that Connor mm -hmm. had and outgrew and the oleanders. And, and my dad had goldenrod and pale verdes in the same family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your dad also your dad is allergic. He could not pick up a cat, mm -hmm. but he can be in a house with a cat mm -hmm. as long as the cat doesn't lick on him. Mm -hmm. Then he's allergic. She shows so luckily. So maybe we shouldn't have let her grab, pick up the cat the minute she walked in this morning. No, nope, because she lie. has, that cat has licked on her, that cat has laid on her. I mean, this is the best cat in the world. And she doesn't have any reaction to the right, cat. That's good. So cats and dogs? Fine. Fine. So this has been a heck of a week for you. Another reaction yesterday. This morning she sends me a picture. She says, are you out of bed yet? Are you awake yet? Well, geez, it was only like 7.20. And I said, I know. And uh, a.m., 7.20 p.m., I'm awake. But mornings, I'm not so So bad. am I now. Uh, yeah. I know. You can be awake at night I'm, now. I'm, I'm like alert and awake at night now, up until like 9, 9.30. Ooh, woo, 9, 9.30. My God. Uh, people, I've been in bed and out by 7, 8 o'clock at night for a decade. Okay, so our internet was out last night when we got home from a concert we'd gone to. And so Ed says, well, we could still watch TV. He said, because remember, I changed our, our antenna thing to go on the other wall so we can watch Channel 13. So we got to watch Channel 13. Then he finds some other kind of um, wonky thing that we could watch. <clears throat> and he calls the uh, internet company who says, well, did you reset it? <sighs> no. And who said, it will be back on at 12.09 a.m. How in the heck do they know at 12.09? I said, wait a minute, Ed. Not around 12, maybe 12.30. No, 12.09. So I said, by God, we're going to check. 12.09, we're going to check to see it wasn't on. So sorry, Cox Communications, but you told a lie. So okay, we, so we will move on now to knitting for May. Um, you're chomping at the bit, so let's start with your stuff. Okay, all right. So last week, remember, I was doing this. It was yellow, and then I was so fancy. And do you know what yarn you were using? Because I know what no. yarn you were using. She was using Debbie Bliss Baby Cashmere. Don't ask me the colors, but that's what the yarn was. Yeah, because I got it from her. Okay, so anyway, and I was really doing a nice job. Look at the yellow, it's nice. The green, not so nice, because I was watching TV and not paying attention at all. I was just doing the whole thing by kind of by feel. So I have a f couple of few little holes here and there. Okay, but anyway, and so, and I don't know, did I start from this side or this side or whatever? No, I so don't So I already know. told her beforehand, she needs to, if you're going to weave in your ends, you need to pay attention and put like a, a stitch marker so you know where you added in the new color so that this little blip line, the blip line is in the same side throughout your project. Yeah. That's the reason. I won't. Anyway, so <clears throat> this is the start of my something scarf. It's a scarf. I, I know it's a scarf. 
So then, okay. So then I was thinking, well, I'm just coming right along here. Okay, I didn't do it on these. I did it on some other needles because I don't like this round needle business. It's and not a round needle. It's a, it's a long, know. straight needle. These are my <clears throat> two wands or whatever that is where it's a long, straight needle where this, because, well, why do you, why are you letting it go 16 feet out? This should, this is. Because I wasn't doing it on this. Oh, I, you just moved it I, onto here to, to show. save it. To okay. So I would, could yeah. show. But if you want, it, eventually, if you want to get to the point where you do like a long blanket. Yeah. Oh, do it on this. Do it on this because see how long it is? But it's like working on a straight needle. That's the whole point. Oh, how cute. Okay, so look at this. This is really cute. Oh, this is neat. She's got a little uh, pattern to it. Yeah. Turn it the other way. Look at that. It, it goes boom, ka -bunk, ka -bunk, like that. So this, I got this. Okay. You know what yes. that is. It's a mandala. Um, I think it's a cotton wool. I saved the, the Ombre paper. mandala, ombre. I don't know, but isn't this pretty for summer? People want to know. Well, I've got the name right here because you told me to always save stuff that I'm looking at. This is what it is. Anyway, so. <clears throat> oh, it's not an ombre mandala. It's a premiere every day. 100% uh, acrylic, premier yarns. Um, they say it's a four, worsted four, but it's not. It feels far more like a two or a three. And I it's think thin. the color is Lagoon. Yeah, Lagoon. Lagoon. Anyway, I loved it because of the shading in it. Okay, so I start out and I was doing this stitch. Three knits, one slip. Okay, and I know that's... Yeah, that's a stitch pattern. Yeah, that's a stitch pattern. And it came from the Nervous Knitter. I remember, because I watched so many of these, you know, I could watch them all day long. I like some of these ladies. So anyway, um, so I was doing this just... I can do this, and nothing gets in the way, and I don't feel boom ba boom ba boom ba as we drive to Mom's house. It's fabulous. Yeah. So then I couldn't remember how do you cast on that little um, slip, snip, slip, lot, slip knot. Slip knot. And so I, I texted her and I said, how do you do this little? And she said, watch a video. So I knew she was busy. And um, she said. Napping. I was napping. Were you napping? Remember, I just had uh, surgery. Yeah, naps, no. So anyway. Um, Oh, I hear a phone. So I I uh, watched it. I got this started. It's really nice. I'm doing garter stitch. No, on no, 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 no. That's no. stockinette. Okay. You know what? I'll get <laughs> tattoos and I'll tattoo all the stuff on me. Okay. I don't care what it's called. I, you know, I just do it. Anyway, but look at how nice it is. Look, I really did a nice job on this. And so I'm doing the tick, 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 tick and watching TV at the same time because I can do this and I can feel, mm -hmm. you know, and I can, my my recliner is like practically in front of the television set. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's funny. And then all of a sudden, and I looked down and I thought, oh geez, I'm, I got that long tail thing going and I'm, I'm knitting with the long tail again. So I had to move that out of the way then. I would, oh, see, now I don't know where is my tail and where is my... That's the tail. You got to tie up the tail so that you uh -huh. stop doing that. You just fold it up a few times, tie it in a knot, okay. so you know that it's... Yeah, and I looked down and thought, oh, shoot, I think I'm, I'm purling when I'm supposed to be knitting stitch. This is, no, this is mm -hmm. all... Knit one side, purl the other side. So see that this is the purl side. So when you see this side and you're mm -hmm. knitting, you must be purling. When you're looking down and you see this side with the V's, that's mm -hmm. the side you knit on. Yeah. So but when I... you see the V's you knit, when you see these these bumps, then mm -hmm. you purl. Yeah, I don't know <clears> what I was on. But anyway, so that's how I'm coming along. And I just, I do something, then I think, hmm... No. Okay. You Rip may it all out. or may not have noticed that there's a distinct difference between my mother and I. I am far more serious about all things than she is. Drives me 
fatty has forever. That's why I love you. But you took your, your quilting pretty seriously. Yeah, I did. I did. But I also with my, my quilting, one and done. This is one of the ladies that I knew um, in one of my quilting groups would say, one and done. That's you, Dorothy. And she'd say, if I did this pattern one time and made this quilt, I'm not doing it again. And she'd find another mm -hmm. pattern, totally mm -hmm. different pattern, and she'd do it. And some of the most intricate quilts. Beautiful. See, this is why it makes a difference when I tell you which side is stockinette and which side is pearl. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to be one and done with knitting, mm -hmm. all knitting patterns are done with the knit and the pearl. The only other thing you really need to know is things like yarn overs. There's some other Slip, step up things, yeah. slip, slipping a stitch. And the pattern but, comes from do so yeah, many Yeah, so if of you that. took it a little bit more seriously, you could get to that one and done deal with knitting also. I will one of these days. Okay. But I'm also a lot older than you are. I'm 24 one, years older. I am one third older than you are. Almost. Almost one third older than she is. Yes. Yes, I turn 48 in September. Yes, I do. I will be 73 on yes. my next birthday. Let's not even get going on that. So I'm getting old. So I thought I would have all this time in the world as I recovered this first week, especially maybe week and a half, to listen to some um, books on tape. So, you know, I used to do the Audible thing. And now one of the fabulous things is with my Prime membership, I get a monthly free book. And now Audible is tied in with Amazon. So you can get a lot of those um, with the Audible narration for only $1.99. So that is fabulous. So, Or you could use your public library and hook into the public library. It's called Libby and from our yeah. public library here. And do the same thing. And it's yeah. free. Ask me, have I done it yet? No. Um, I haven't figured it out. And yes, I have the blind braille Books library thing app, but I don't really like the way theirs is set up. It's kind of harder to navigate. And then you have to send them in and get them back. And no, 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 you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. It's an app now. Oh, really? I told you that two years ago. It's an app now. Uh, but it's two harder to... I was 70. What do I remember? It's harder to um, navigate the app. It's, it's not pleasant. And you can only have one out at a time. So if you get bored with one book, you pretty much have to send it back before you finish it to get another one. It's kind of annoying. So I thought I would have all this, you know, quiet time of, of help and, and respite. Not so much. So I did a few rows on my sock arms, bottom up um, sweater, which is... What is this going to be? It's a sweater. This is the bottom of a sweater. See? It's the ribbing at the bottom. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that that would about fit my leg. Yep. And um, it might actually fit me now. I was thinking it might be for Connor. Um, the thing is, the other sleeve business that I had was just not working. So I redid on my hat um, circular machine, knitting machine, I did this because what I'm hoping to do is just a little bit of sleeve. Um, and then I will do ribbing, very short sleeves. But, I mean, Cute. I don't know. Cute. Because the whole thing about sock arms sweaters are that it's a self-striping arm to a solid body. So, there you go. Very cute. So that's what I'm, I'm kind of working on. I haven't really done much of anything else. Um, and... What else? Um, got the new app going with... Um, so do you want to know what what my favorite um, podcast is? Is this called a podcast? Yeah, we're podcasting. Oh. I thought a podcast you only listen to. No, you can listen to podcasts. You can watch podcasts. 
Either one. Well, I, I watch and listen. Okay. Okay. I love this guy in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Is his name Ross? Anyway, he's the smelly yarn. Yes. Oh. Okay. And people just come up with their names however they want to I come love, up with their I love that guy. Okay, he cracks mm -hmm. me up. And I love, um, oh, oh, look at this. Oh, this is Stop. something else. Just Stop. Stop. And I, I love the, um, the girls. What's it called? The I Knit Girls? The Knit Girls? Oh, the Knit Girls. The one that I sent you yesterday where she had some, just some quilting stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I love these those two ladies, yeah. Yeah. Um, they do a knitting retreat called, um, it's in Nashville, it's in July every year. And so next year we'll put our names in and see if we both get drawn. Maybe we'll go. Mm. So we are going to pull. I already did this beforehand. Um, pulled a name for May because I'm going to post this tomorrow on May 1st. Nightingale Crochet won the uh, prize for May. And this is what our monthly prizes are. Um, thank you for participating. A nice little card you can put in a project bag and write notes on. Um, another larger card with our little catchphrase, look with your heart first, because blind people can't look with their eyes first, they have to look with their heart first. Um, a unscented lip balm from our sponsor, Growly Bear Soap Company. From Mayor. Mayor, Arizona. Which is just, um, it's like out of Prescott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Freckled Whimsy. Here is a Freckled Whimsy um, mm, project bag. That's cute. It's, I like her bags. They're really nice. Mm -hmm. um, is this one of hers? Well, you have to look. What does it say down there? I think that's I, a Betsy Makes. See, I can't see it from there. Betsy Makes, I believe, is what this one is. I don't know, is. but she gave me this one. Is this mm -hmm. cute or what? So in the prize, you will get the cards, the lip balm, the project bag, and then... I always crank either a hat tube, a sock tube, or maybe a short this tube of pretty. both. This is pretty. This yeah. is Loopy Legends, the Loopy U um, Water Lilies. It's an 80-20, that's Superwash Merino Nylon. And I thought it was very springy colored. Very pretty in person, if you can't and see then, the colors. Fair There's time. a Braille stitch marker on there. I send mm -hmm. those with all mm -hmm. of them. And this is in a 90 stitch so uh, hat tube. So you can, you can weave in circular needles and you can do ribbing and you can do decreases and you can make a hat with this. You can do a fold it in on itself and do a double thick hat um, or all you've got to do is pull, um, pull from the end like a sock tube, and it just unwinds, and you've got a skein. And this is a full hundred gram skein. Um, but couldn't you make? Couldn't you just take those also and just finish off the ends and make those into neck scarves? Yeah, if you want to, people can do that. Mm -hmm. They can do any darn thing they want. So then I we also, are women and we can do what we want. That's right. Also, mm -hmm. I found Cute. these stitch markers from A Needle Runs Through It. And because my 2019 is the year of the sweater, I'm including these. And they have things like knit two together, slip, slip, knit, beginning of round, make one right. I mean, all these little things. So if you are older and you forget what's going on, you can put this on your stitch marker that you're marking stuff so you actually know why you're marking it. And then my husband has made a number of little... Um, Turn this so they can see the patterns in this wood. A number of little uh, wooden things. And I like them to put all my little trinkets in. Um, you know... Crochet hooks, needles, scissors, whatever. Mm -hmm. You do with it what you want. 
So that is the prize for May, and it goes to Nightingale Crochet. Send us, I'm going to leave this here for it. Send us an email at yarncloset at yahoo.com. There's a link where you can contact me through the yarncloset.com to get me your address. People will be in the drawings every month if they subscribe and comment on the podcast through YouTube. And occasionally I do them through the group on Ravelry. Um, although there aren't a lot of threads going, as we build up membership there, I'll be pulling names for prizes also. And how long have we been doing this? I don't know. About 40 minutes, 45 yeah. minutes? Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm ex exhausted, exhausted. Isn't it funny how, how rosy my red cheeks are? She just since looks I got, so darn healthy. I haven't had rosy red cheeks for so long. I've noticed that they're very healthy looking. Yeah. Look my like color, a little farm girl. My color is coming back. Mm hmm And, uh, yeah. My rings are fitting better. I know. Look at that. Ed said, do you, do think you still have a mark from that? Yes, I'm telling you, that's how oh tight God. that ring was. So my husband is a retired paramedic. He's got a degree in field medicine. He was a fireman also. And he had to cut her ring off because she couldn't get it over her um, yeah, neck. Yeah, see, there you, you can see. And this is almost two weeks now. And I'd had this just as plain gold band I wore. I don't like to wear jewelry. It just, it bugs me. I, I just... Can't do that. I have one necklace I wear sometimes, but oh boy, you wouldn't see me with a lot of stuff. Okay, so I have this one plain gold band. Well, it started to hurt. My finger would hurt a lot. And I thought, oh, I should just take it off. And I couldn't get it off. Realized that I've got so much arthritis in my knuckle that my knuckle had um, calcified and I could no longer get it over. So I had to go to her house and he cut it off. I still have the indentation of where that ring is two weeks later. That's how tight it was. Ed says last night, so do you think that we should take you out to the mall or something and have them resize that ring so you can wear it again? Well, but if it's big enough to get over the knuckle, it's not gonna stay on. Well, I know, that's a, my point too. Why do I need to have a ring to prove, prove what? Exactly. He knows I'm married to him. Okay, the kids are getting <laughs> restless. I'm yeah. exhausted. Our coffee's out. Yeah. I got to go to the doctor here in, is it 9 o'clock already? Yeah. 10 okay, yeah. Nine. We have to leave at 9.30 to get me to the doctor. Pray, people. Pray that I get these out. Oh, I'm posting this after the doctor. They don't know what out. The um, um, drains. The drain tubes. Like 12 or 18 inches of tubing is actually wound around in your chest. Because when you take the thing out, um, it leaves a cavity. But she looks darn good. You do. Mm -hmm. You look good. Mm -hmm. So it, if I, it works, I feel it works. good. I feel awake, and like I said, I don't. I feel alert, and that sadness is gone. And for mm -hmm. me, those two are the biggest ones. Um, and I know it's a road, and there's a lot of different things, and whatever. But you found something for you that works. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important. Be your own advocate with your health. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to anybody who says, oh, you should do this. Or if you go to a doctor and you're not satisfied, remember this. And I'm a nurse. I'm going to tell you. You hire them, you fire them. If he's not working for you, getting you the help you need, Move on. Just he mild. or she, because there are he, some she's out there that are not the biggest advocates for for your health. Your health. Either. Luckily, you and I have. Yeah, we have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't anymore because no, she's not but, in your insurance. But but the kids. Your still kids. Go yeah. Yeah. But she's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, look with your heart first, and we will talk to you next week. Subscribe, comment, let us know what's going on in your life. We will be there to support you, pray for you, and thank you to all the other podcasters we watch, the ones that get back to us. Um, I'm doing this vegetable protein 
in my uh, smoothies that I got from Scotty's Animals. He got back to me right away on a day I know he was really busy. And to me, that's an amazing part of this whole YouTube podcast or community. Um, even though we can't always meet in person, even though we can't always talk in person, we can still make those little bits of effort and support each other. Look with your heart first.